Hello, my name is Keith Brown, known to you as Keith726. I have never made an instructable before, so please excuse the crudeness of the production here. Uh, I made this for my girlfriend. <coughs> Everybody, she keeps it in a kitchen, that's why there's some stains on it. Uh, uh, everybody that walks in and sees it asks, what is that thing doing? Uh, what it is is a one-digit clock. Uh, it uses a seven-segment LED display and four standard LEDs to display the time. Uh, inside there's an Atmega 168 microcontroller and a real-time clock chip, a DS1302, which has parallel outputs which go to the uh, microcontroller. Uh, the new versions I'm making are going to use a uh, DS1307, it just has a different interface, the I squared C interface only needs two wires instead of the four that I'm using now, uh, it just frees up more pins on the microcontroller. Um, those of you who play with microcontrollers probably know you're always running out of pins, so um, new version is just going to use a different version of the real-time clock chip. Uh, I tried originally using just one chip, the uh, the microcontroller, which runs at 14.7 megahertz. So if you you know if you count 14.7 uh, clocks per second and divide it up, you can figure out you can determine one second and then do all the arithmetic to figure out minutes and hours. Uh, when I did that, I found that it wasn't accurate enough. Uh, I was losing about a second a day, which is not really good enough for a uh, for for a clock. Uh, I don't know if it's because I had so much code running, uh, doing displays and other things, or what the reason was. But I decided to use a second chip. The real-time clock chip keeps track of the time. Uh, you know, it it will it will output hours, minutes, seconds, uh, days, a.m., p.m., anything that you want. And then the microcontroller is basically just talking to the real-time clock chip, uh, updating it if I need to change the time, and then reading the time from that chip. And then the microcontroller chip is, is doing all of the uh, display functions, turning on and off the LEDs to, to display the time. <coughs> so the display is a uh, seven-segment LED. It's displaying each digit of the time. Underneath are four standard, those are three millimeter uh, LEDs, and they tell you which digit you're looking at. So right now the time is 11:21, <coughs> and you'll see the first digit lights to say that's the one, the tens of hours, ones of hours, tens of minutes, and ones of <laughs> ones of minutes. So you can tell which digit you're looking at. If you look closely, you'll see that I fade the display on the on the LED. Uh, the numbers don't just appear, but they fade upwards. There's a few milliseconds, well, a couple of hundred milliseconds of of, dis of fade, of delay, in between the lighting of each segment. So, the number appears to paint itself onto the chip. It just looked nicer than having the number just appear suddenly, uh, each digit appear suddenly. It just looked a little harsh. This looks a little quieter and, and nicer, and a little smoother. Uh, one other thing I did was I display tens of digits on the left side of the seven segment and ones of digits on the right side. So for 11, the one, tens of tens appears on the left, ones appears on the right. So you can tell whether you're looking at a 10 or a 1. Is it 1 o'clock or is it 10 o'clock? Uh, and, and that does a that does a couple of things. Um, it makes it less confusing, and it also makes it look like there's more than one display when there isn't. Okay, it's just one display, one LED uh, doing that. Uh, setting time is done with one push button. Uh, I'm going to turn this around and show you the back, and uh, there's the here's the power. Uh, electrical power, the one to five volts coming in. This is a Walwart uh, standard 
transformer, you know, standard transformer that powers everything in the world. And uh, this one button is used for setting the time. Uh, the way it works is that when a given digit is displayed, if you want to change it, you just push the button when that when that digit is displayed. Like right now, it's 11:23. If I want to change it to 11:33, where's that button? When the two shows, I just hold the button and it changed now to 11:33. Uh, so for daylight savings, if you have to change this thing twice a year, you just push the one button. Um, it's pretty accurate. I don't really need to do any time setting throughout the year except for daylight savings. I didn't build that feature into it. Um, I have other versions in addition to the just displaying the time. When, this, when the display is off, like right now, what I do is just run a little chase for about three seconds. Uh, the LEDs just chase around nicely uh, in between the display of the time. Uh, unfortunately, that version I can't show you. I built that for my parents, and it's at their home down in Florida. Um, and the newest version also displays temperature. It has, there's a, uh, a temperature chip inside connected to the microcontroller and it can tell the ambient temperature, the yeah, temperature of the room. So in between some time displays it will show temperature. For example, it will show 75F for 75 degrees F. Also the horizontal bars on, on the 7 segment LED will cycle upwards if the temperature is rising, they'll cycle downwards if the temperature is falling, or the center bar will just blink a few times if the temperature is holding steady. Um, again, I'm just showing this version. I don't have uh, that feature built into this one. Uh, the case. Uh, in addition to being a geek with the microcontrollers, I'm an avid woodworker, and the uh, the case is made from actually from trees that I, I cut down. Uh, the outside is curly maple, the front face, but the, the 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 sides and the top are made of spalted birch. And if you're not a woodworker, uh, spalted means spoiled. Uh, which is pretty much rotten wood when a tree falls in the wood as it starts to decay if you can catch it in time before it completely rots and cut it up into boards uh, you'll get this beautiful pattern from the fungus that attacks the wood and you also see there's a lot of uh, wormholes and bug holes where, where critters critters have entered and uh, eat, eaten, up, eaten up the tree uh, I did that because uh, this is a clock, it's a timepiece, and this wood shows the ravages of time. Uh, what happens to wood as time progresses, and I thought that was appropriate for the case of a clock. Uh, the back is, is curly maple. Um, I'll open this up so you can see the internals. Inside there is, on the right, is the, the bigger chip is the Atmega, uh, the microcontroller chip on the right. On the left the smaller chip is the real-time clock chip. Uh, everything is uh, hand soldered. I'm just learning how to make circuit boards uh, and I'd like to make more of these. It's, it's, it's a nice project and uh, as you all know the hand soldering can be tedious so I'd like to just get some circuit boards made um, to simplify the process. There's the big old battery uh, I could have used a coin cell, but I didn't know enough about which one to buy, so I bought this big old battery, which will probably power this thing for five years before that battery uh, discharges. Uh, the second circuit board up above, uh, trying to get some light on it, is just the LEDs all wired into the back of um, of that that circuit board. Um, you can see. The power supply, if I disconnect the power supply, uh, the display stops, but the real-time clock is continuing to run and keeping time, uh, so that when you, when you plug the power supply back in, uh, 
you're, you're back in business. So if you lose power, this doesn't lose time. Um, you can disconnect it or do whatever you have to do. And with that battery, it'll go for years. Um, and again, that's it. The time setting function I've shown you. But if I wanted to change this to 12 o'clock, I just hit that button. So now it's 12.37. If I wanted to change it to 137, hold on, right now it's 1237. So when the digit comes up for 12, 1, 2, I push the button, and now it's 1, 2, now it's set for 237. So, that's all there is to it. Uh, it took about 500 lines of code for the microcontroller chip. Um, the first couple of hundred lines or so is for the microcontroller to talk to the uh, real-time clock chip. There are functions that you have to write to set the time, read the time, uh, set the hour, set the minutes, you know. Uh, so there's, there's a, I guess, almost 200 lines of code for that. The rest is for the display. Uh, I don't send numbers to the seven segment LED. Uh, I turn on each uh, segment individually. So when you see the number seven there, I'm not sending a seven to this. I have a lookup table which turns on the uh, each segment. And that allows a lot of flexibility. That allows me to fade, to do the fade in of the of the numbers as they come in. Uh, the chase pattern which you don't see in this in this one um, but it, it gives a lot more flexibility than just sending a number to the seven segment LED and then decoding it um, as a number here I handle each bit uh, separately so you know also setting of the time just using the one button to set the time well as you know if you're going to make the hardware simpler that means the software has to be more complicated so for this to know when I you know, when to set the time as as a given digit is displayed when I push that button there has to be routines which says this is the, the button this is the digit I want to change then increment that digit uh, some go from 0 to 12 some go from 0 to 6 for 60 seconds you know for 60 seconds or 60 minutes so yeah, there's a bit of complexity in the code, but it's it's nothing really difficult, and it was fun to write, and it worked out very nicely. Uh, that's it. I hope you like this Ible. It's the first one I've ever done. Uh, I'm entering this in the LED contest, and uh, I hope you vote for it, and uh, I hope I win. Anyway, this is Keith726 signing out. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, have fun. Bye.